Welcome to the second installment of Rump and Robbie's weekly IU basketball podcast. I'm Robbie Howard, along with Sam the Rump Rumpsa. Exciting night last night for the NA basketball team. They win 99 to, what was it, 45? A 45. 50, a 54-point victory. Ken Bykoff of Inside Indiana would like that. They win by 54, and Sam Houston State scores 45. A little inverse there. That's what he's into, but... You know, some people are saying that that was perhaps the best game of basketball in the Tom Crean era, and really, I think it's tough to argue against that. Yeah, they played extremely well last night. It was the fourth largest margin of uh, defeat in program history, second under Tom Crean, second to the Howard victory, where they mm-hmm. won by 57. Uh, Which was also a ridiculous game. <laughs> right, and just right from the get-go, I mean, it, it was clear that uh, this game wasn't going to be close. We actually thought that... Uh, um, their, their big man, Michael Holyfield, was going to be a, mm-hmm. a challenge to Cody Zeller. He's 6'11", 255, mm-hmm. very imposing, huge guy. Fouled out in 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. 12 minutes, had one point. And it wasn't like Cody had a you know great game yesterday. He, he had 13 points instead of Cody's still a little sick. I, I think yeah. he's still fighting the flu. Crean actually said in the post game, he said that he had considered starting Jeremy Hollowell in Cody's place. That'd be... A really interesting matchup. You're switching out your seven foot center in with a six eight, really small forward guy. Well, well, they, either way, they did take out Wofford lineup, so it was, mm-hmm. it was already a smaller lineup. Sheehy yeah, that was last that was night. interesting. What do you think about that? Moving Christian out of the lineup and putting Will Sheehy in. I mean, I, I don't really know the motivation to it, but it worked out pretty well. Christian Wofford leading scored 23 points, went 10 of 10 from the line. He's had a fantastic night and and was hitting his shots for the first time we've seen all year. He struggled in his first three games from beyond the arc. Went three of three last night. Was, was really able to find a shot, and I think it helped Will, too, because he had a fantastic game. It was just the second time in Seawatt's career that he's come off the bench, so it was weird for him. He said in the post game, he said there's not really anything you can do about it. Once coach tells you, you just sort of right. have to suck it up and, and do what's best for the team, but really, and this is pure speculation here, I think the reason that Crean decided to go with Watford off the bench is because this team is so deep I mm-hmm. think that Crean saw something in practice that he just thought Christian wasn't going hard enough. He wasn't giving it his all. And so he decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to send a message. If you're not going to give 100% in practice, then you're going to yeah. sit on the bench to start the game. Well, I mean, obviously this IU team is, is so deep. And when you when you win by 54 points, you're going to play a lot of guys. But 10 guys played more than 11 minutes. And, and that's just incredible. I mean, there's the most minutes played was Will Sheehy with 26. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the real story from this game, in, in my opinion, was Jordan Halls yep. getting his 1,000th career point, 44th uh, Hoosier basketball player to go over 1,000 points in his career. And, and, you know, it was already obviously a blowout, but when he hit that three to, to get him over 1,000 or, or hit 1,000, I'm not exactly sure. Hit 1,000. Uh, that was 1,000 on it, the dot. Was yeah. it? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, when he hit that three, I mean, people are people had a sense of how many points he needed, and it just went it just mm-hmm. went nuts. There was a timeout call. Crean came out and raised his hand. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was a great moment, and I mean, it, it was just a great moment through a great great game throughout. Jordan didn't even know what was going mm-hmm. on when when Crean comes out and raises his hand. Jordy thought he was in trouble he, because <laughs> if you look at that shot, it's it's a deep perimeter three. And Jordy thought that Crean was mad at him. He, he <laughs> thought he was in trouble because he thought he took a bad shot. And another speculation amongst the media is that people think Jordy was still a little down. He had just missed a free throw. And <laughs> yeah, you don't see that very often. <laughs> Jordy doesn't miss free throws. That was the one thing. If you want to pick on right, one thing right. from last night, the free throw shooting was a little poor. Um, I, I saw one stat. Well, there, there were 20 of 34 without Christian Whopper's 10 of 10 mm-hmm. effort. Yeah. And either way, 30 of 44, you're still at 68%. Yeah. Not, not a very not good very effort. good. Uh, Jeremy Hollowell missed four free throws. Austin Etherington missed a free throw. Jordan Hall missed a free throw. Uh, some surprising misses. Vic, Victor Oladipo, who had a, Cody a, a, still a struggling great game. from the yeah. line a little. Vic missed three in a row. Um, really, everybody except for Christian Wofford that took a free throw missed one. And so, you know, that's something. No matter who the opponent is, you know, that's something that you have to have to be focused on. No matter whether you're up 50, 54 or whether you're up mm-hmm. four. And, and that's something moving forward when you look at conference games and course right. the UNC game coming up in uh, just a little over a week now those are games where you can't shoot 60 percent from the line and win not at all I mean free throws just always come back to haunt teams it seems like and uh, you know thankfully I you not, not not a big deal last night when when you're winning when you're when you're putting a 99 not a hundred but 99 <laughs> and, that, and that's something we'll talk about too you know it's not a big deal but 
is something that, that definitely does need to be fixed. And, and free throw shooting, I don't think this is really a concern for this team. Most of these guys are great shooters. I mean, Austin, normally a really good shooter. Of course, Jordy, I think arguably one of the best free throw shooters in the nation. Yeah. Victor's improved. Cody, of course, is also a great shooter as well. Cody attempted his first three-point field goal last night. He yeah, missed, he did. but that was his, only, that his was first only three-pointer missed, yeah. of his college career that he's attempted, so that was exciting. Not sure what Crean thought about that. That came early in the first half. Going back to the free throws, though, the, yeah. the one infamous miss of the night was Austin Etherington. Of course, IU is at 98 points, and Austin hits one of two free throws. And the whole thing was if IU basketball hits 100 points, then it's free Kidoba for 100 people presenting an IU basketball game. I would have hated to be a Kidoba <laughs> employee last night. That would have just been awful to have to deal with 100 free meals. Uh, but, yeah, I'm sure that would have filled up quick, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people would have would have ran down to Kirkwood and and, and tried to get their free Kidova, but you know, oh well, so you, you win by 54. It, <laughs> I, I think I think it's all right. I think there'll be more opportunities for for free Kidova ne in the future. Neither the the players nor Crean were aware of it until we asked them about it in the post game <laughs> press conference. And Will Sheehy actually said, "I'm more of a Chipotle guy myself," so he wasn't too worried about people not getting free Kidova. <laughs> I do know Yogi is a huge fan of Kidova. He, yeah, he, he tweets about Kidova yeah. a lot. So. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure Yogi would have been excited if they got to 100. And, and that's another thing to point out. I, I think Crean talked about it a little bit. He said Yogi did not have a great game <clears throat> offensively. I, I think he scored six points. Three, only three points. Only three points. Um, he did have seven assists. He had some nice looks. But ever since the Bryant game, he did struggle a little bit against North mm -hmm. Dakota State too. But it, it's it's another you know showing of how how deep this team is. I mean, Jordan made some great passes last night. There were there were just great passes all around. Remy Abel. Able to run the point, um, got no really pun intended there. Able to run the point, but um, and and we, we were able to see Jordan as the shooting guard, which which I really like to see. Jordan um, got some great looks at open yeah, threes he did. last night. He did, and it was because Remy's able to run the point um, along with guys like Yogi. So it's it's just you know so so versatile his team is, even when a guy like Yogi is struggling for, uh, offensively. Yeah, that's the point I was getting to. This team is so deep. Mm -hmm. You can have multiple guys that have bad games. I think Jeremy Hollowell didn't have a very good game last mm -hmm. night either. No, uh, and, it, and it's just going to get better once Hunter... Yeah, and, and you, you have to think about it. There's still three guys who aren't playing for this team. Derek Elston, Hunter Mosquera Perea, and, and Peter Jerkin, all three front court players. Right. Once you get them back, then Jeremy can go back to playing the three not the yeah. four or the five, he can go back to playing his natural position. I think this team has nowhere to go but up. No, not, not at all. And, you know, I I just can't see him losing the non-conference. <laughs> I, I can't see it happening. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the Legends basketball, but UCLA or Georgetown is going to be a challenge. And then obviously you got the North Carolina game. But other than that, you know, I, I just don't see this team losing in the non-conference, and I don't see them losing at home. The only, the only yeah. possible loss it's, I see for this team in regular season our road games in the Big Ten, and mm -hmm. that's completely understandable, even if you're the number one team in the country. Yeah, you look at at Michigan, at Ohio State, at Michigan State, yeah. those are all going to be tough games. But before we jump too far yeah. ahead, looking ahead to the Legends Classic, of course, starting Monday, I will take on Georgia at the Barclays Center out in Brooklyn. Uh, I know a lot of people are, are excited for that. Um, not so sure they're excited about playing Georgia. Georgia a team not too good. They lost last night to Southern Mississippi. Yeah, that, that game should be ugly, but you know what's going to be exciting about that game, right? What's that? Bobby Knight announced That's an true. IU game. That's true. Uh, that'll be the first time since his broadcasting career, and um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fun to uh, I'm sure it'll be fun to listen in on what he has to say about Coach Green's squad. Of course, we know that you can also listen to the game on WIOX.org and 99.1 FM in the Bloomington area. Adam Cohen and Sean Nash will be out there calling that game for WIOX Sports. But it, it will be interesting to hear yeah. what Knight has to say. About the team, you know, he's also doing some Kentucky games this year. Yeah, so that, should, that should be fun. I'm not sure how happy he is with ESPN, but, you, you know, you look at the Georgia game, that looks like a pretty solid win. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could yeah, be a track game. you got to come out with high intensity because, you know, you don't want to look ahead to UCLA because Georgia, yeah, they just lost to Southern Miss, but they can still come out. They're still going to come out with a, a very high intensity, playing in the brand-new Barclays Center, playing the number one team in the country. It's a shot to be the number one team, mm -hmm. so... Uh, definitely got still have to watch out for Georgia and, and be on the top game, and then playing uh, either UCLA or Georgetown. I know Georgetown Otto Porter has concussion-like mm -hmm. symptoms, excuse me, for them. So we'll see if if he's able to play. 
uh, UCLA, of course, without Shabazz Muhammad, but mm -hmm. they, they've still got a they've still Hey, IU basketball is playing without Honor and Peter. Yeah. So uh, they've got. I say suck it up. Kyle Anderson, Tony Parker, mm -hmm. great freshman class, UCLA 13th in the country. They put up 63 points in the first half last night uh, on their way to a 100 to 70 win. So UCLA is going to be the first real test for this team, but you still can't look past Georgia. Mm -hmm. that, that'll be a, a fun matchup with UCLA. Really, the first test of the IU basketball team this season. Something we want to talk about, though, because Rump was upset we didn't get to talk about it last week. Noah Vonley and the recruiting class of 2013 for the Hoosiers. Of course, uh, I think number three in the country. Is number number three. I, I don't know who's number two. I, I'm not going to find a number two, number two is, but obviously Kentucky number one. Mm -hmm. with of their, course. Yeah. Uh, but IU with a very strong class, and it, it's really developed uh, just in the past, uh, just in the last month uh, since Troy Williams committed. Troy Williams went on the mm -hmm. 28th. 6'6", 190-pound, four-star recruit, I believe 37th in the country. I have to say and Troy Williams is who I'm most excited for in this class. Troy Williams reminds me of Victor Oladipo, except he's bigger, and if this is possible, I think he may be more explosive. Wow. And I, that's scary to say, but to me, if you watch what he can do when he drives into the lane, I think, I think he's scary good. But he reminds me a lot of Victor. I'm not sure how good his defense is. Because when you watch tape on these guys, they're, they're not showing any, uh, not too much defense, any right. lockdown on-ball defense or anything like that. But what he can do when he gets the basketball in his hands is scary. Yeah, and same with Noah Vonley. He's 6'9", 222 pounds. Where's, number, where's jersey number 35? I think he's Kevin Durant. He, 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 wants to, he, he models the game after Kevin Durant, and I think he's that kind of talent. He's about he the was, same size. He too. is about the same size. He's got to work on a shot because, you know, not, no <laughs> one has Kevin Durant's shot, basically. But... Uh, you know, just such a great talent. He's seventh ranked player in the country. He was third ranked in, in the class of 2014, but reclassified to the class of 2013. Had his official visit against Bryant. Uh, you hear the we want Noah chance, and then the football game walked right in front of me, uh, and I, I shook Tom Green's hand and, and, and waved, starstruck. Waved, waved to Noah Vonley, <laughs> yeah, uh, and we started the Noah Vonley chant, and uh, his, his cousin's actually Kevin Coleman, the running back on the IU mm -hmm. football team, and you know, he, he just, it, it, as soon as I used to recruiting BJ on you, it was, it was clear that Noah Vonley was the guy that, that IU wanted, and, and they went after him, and, and uh, you know, Noah pulled the trigger pretty quick after his official visit, but, so it, it, it's, it's very exciting to have a player like that come in. I know you're really excited about Noah Vonley. To me, he has to, to show a little more team effort and sort of buy into the concept of Indiana basketball. He scares me a little bit because... He strikes me as more of a Kentucky type player. He strikes me he's a Kentucky as type player. He's a, one, a and one and done. He is a one and done type player. He's he's got that type of talent. But in order to win championships at this point, you've got to have pro prospects. And I just don't know if that's the way Crean wants to build his program, though. I think most of Hoosier Nation can agree that they really like the way he's built this program. He, of course, you, know, you look at guys like Will Sheehy, Victor Oladipo. They were not heavily recruited. He took them in here and he shaped a culture. And and there's guys like this in the in the twenty. 2013 class, too, who committed back in 2010, Colin Hartman, who's getting looks from Purdue and Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He's an Austin awesome Etherington type player. He, he is an Austin Etherington He's type bigger. Player. He's I think he's 6'10". He, no, he's 6'6". He's six, six. Oh, 6'6". Six, six. Six, six. I saw him at Buffalo Louis, actually, on his official visit. <laughs> um, and then Devin Davis, uh, also 6'6". Six, six. Devin Davis excites process. me a lot from yeah. Warren Central. He, he's, he's a guy who's more of a defender. These guys have been in this class a long time, and it's going to be interesting to see how their roles play out with IU because... You know, is and also well, Luke Fisher too, another three-star guy, six ten. He's going to be Cody's 15. replacement someday. Yeah, exactly. Not, not quite as talented, but he he can get there. But he's six eleven, uh, skilled around yeah. the rim. And, and and something that we don't want to talk about is over committing and over signing, which we are over signed by two right now. Once Corey Williams <laughs> signs on Monday, we'll be over signed by three. It's something you don't want to talk about, but it's something that is going to happen, you know, it's something that has happened. and It's, how, how, it's something you know, that'll hopefully take care of itself. Like how, it but how do you think it is going to take care of itself? You don't really know. I mean, yeah. it's most likely what's going to happen is someone's going to have to leave the program. And you hate uh, but, that because, you, you know, you, you make, you, you have these guys make a commitment to you and you want to make a commitment to them. But, we'll, you know, it'll work out. It has to. And... It is pretty scary how much talent there's going to be. We didn't even mention Stanford Robinson, six four out of Finlay Prep, mm -hmm. one of the top. I mean, you look at you look at the teams that that these guys come from: <laughs> Cathedral Basketball Powerhouse, Finlay Prep, the Basketball Powerhouse. Same with Oak Hill Academy, New Hampton Prep with for Noah Vonley. You know, IU's really starting to recruit on a national level, and it's it's pretty scary what this team can be like next year. They're already the number one team in the country this year. I still think maybe this is just because I'm too much of a Hoosier traditionalist, but 
I think if you just lock down the state of Indiana, you can be fine. Well, yeah, you can. If you look <laughs> at the talent. It, 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 yeah, if you could, if you could lock down the state of Indiana, you'd have the number one team every single yeah. year with, with all the talent <laughs> in the state. But unfortunately, this guy's going to Michigan, Michigan mm-hmm. State, Ohio State, and there are some other programs in the state. You know, as much as we don't want to acknowledge them, there is Purdue, <laughs> there is Notre Dame, there is Butler. Hey, Ron, how did Purdue do last night in Villanova? I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I, we're, we're trying to keep this podcast clean. We, we, don't, we don't want to have any obscenities on this podcast. That's how I feel about the game last night. Tough break for Purdue last night. But IU basketball looking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, really soaring high and, and looks like they could be even better soon. So big test next week against UCLA. Of course, we won't have a podcast for you next week because... We're on Thanksgiving break, so... Leaving in about an hour and 13 minutes is my estimated departure time for for good good old Lafayette, Indiana. Yeah, so we'll see you back here in two weeks on Rump and Robbie's weekly IU basketball talk. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.